All right. Welcome back. We are discussing Christina Rossetti, another 19th century female writer living in the 1800s, of course. And the poem of hers we read for class is called Eve. Hey, Eve. Need to read another one on Eve because, again, that's a continuing theme we're tracing throughout this class is the notion um, of Eve as template for women and women's rights. You know, the, the dynamic set up with women being um, cast as seducer, sinner, temptress, um, and subservient to, to men because of um, that initial sin. So, you know, it's kind of an interesting dynamic that gets set up between men and women. Now, if, if there weren't the story of Eve, I'm sure, you know, I don't know, well, I guess I can't say I'm sure, but, you know, probably would have been something else, right, to castigate women in a, or not castigate, rather, but to cast women in a, perhaps a, a lesser role. I don't know. How do these things evolve, these, these patriarchal societies? I'm sure there are matriarchal ones out there, too, um, but, you know, it's interesting, this, this, this notion of Eve and her role um, in the creation of how women are viewed and in um, the creation of uh, patriarchal hierarchies, right? All right, well, if you look at the written out lecture, there is a portrait of Christine, Christina Rossetti so that you can see what she looked like. Um, and there are web links again to like uh, the website Victorian Web that we had looked at, you know, for a different author. You can find more information about her biographical, social, artistic, and literary um, parts of her life there. Uh, and there's another one called Hymnology Archive. Yeah. So you can look at that one as well. And then there's a YouTube clip that uses an actress to dramatize Christina Rossetti reading one of her poems. Not the one that we re read for class, but another one. Anyway, Christina Rossetti, she, again, she's a British author. Uh, she lived from 1830 till 1894, so till about 64 years of age. So finally, we're somebody who's living into their 60s, one of our women writers. Like, we haven't seen that since, I think, ugh, I don't know, Renaissance times with Queen Elizabeth. She she lived, you know, a good amount of time. Um, so finally, Christina Rossetti is leaving, living to a longer age because we're progressing forward in time, too. Um, and they say that, Christina Rossetti died of cancer, so at least she lived till 64, but ooh, they said the cancer was accompanied by long bouts of screaming, so it sounds as if there was a lot of suffering involved. Uh, Christina was born to a highly literate and artistic Italian emigre family in London, so her family had emigrate, emigrated from Italy to London, so that's why, you know, hence you have that Italian last name, Rossetti. Um, her father was named Gabrielli. Uh, he was a famous poet and politician. He had to flee Italy because he had been a member of the Carbonari. So remember, we're talking about, like, at the time, a lot of political upheaval in Italy. They were trying to unify, uh, remember, as a country. And they finally did. And still political upheaval. So her father had to flee Italy. So he came to England. Her mother, Frances Polidori, was also an ex Italian expatriate living in England and working as a governess. That was one of the few occupations available to women. You know, you could be a female governess. That means you took care of the children and you helped them learn certain things, um, you know, or you could be a seamstress, right? Um, so you worked in one of those traditional uh, female occupations. Her sister Maria was scholarly and eventually joined an Anglican sisterhood. Her brother, William, was a critic and editor, and her brother Dante Gabriel, or Dante Gabriel, became the famous poet and painter who formed the Pre-Raphaelite Pre Brotherhood, an organization of other poets and painters that subscribed to neo-romantic medievalism. Uh, and so there was a kind of like a rebirth of medievalism through this Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. And it was also kind of like neo-romantic themes too. Neo-romantic, that means just new romantic. So kind of like taking the romanticism of the of the earlier 1800s and kind of bringing it back to life with a little bit different spin on it. Um, so, or bringing it back to popularity again. 
uh, Christina definitely hung out with this a very cool group of Victorian Illuminati. Yes. So um, she had a good group to um, kind of, you know, work with. And um, I'm sure they all kind of like the ideas, you know, like when you're in a group of people, a lot of times you can like discuss ideas and that leads to like even more ideas. And you have these great conversations and you may bet ideas off each other and um, discuss philosophies and, and you can get, you know, there's a lot, there's strength in groups, right? So she, she had this incredible group that, that I'm sure helped uh, introduce her to new ideas as well as cultivate her own. Christina's first volume of poetry was called Goblin Market and Other Poems. It's a Goblin Market is a really famous poem, a very long, really famous poem. It was published in 1862. And um, her poem, it's her most famous one, Goblin Market, is in the anthology. If you care to look at it, you may. It's not the poem of hers we're reading. This week I chose Eve because it kind of dovetails with some of those themes of Eve that we've been already talking and reading about and discussing in class. All right, so the poem um, combines themes that continue to surface throughout Christina's other poetry and writings. And this is in, uh, this is desire, temptation, renunciation, redemption, female agency, sexuality, and Victorian gender roles. The poem was such a success, and this is Goblin Market we're, we're discussing right now, it was such a success that people were hailing her as the female laureate of England taking Elizabeth Barrett Browning's place upon her death. So remember, people have talked about making Elizabeth Barrett Browning the Poet Laureate of England when when William Wordsworth died in 1850. Now, Elizabeth Barrett Browning wasn't given that position, but people had talked about doing it. So when Elizabeth Barrett Browning died, people were, you know, she kind of slid into that place as very famous, very renowned and accomplished female poet of, of England. And, and there was, people hailed her as that female poet laureate, even though, you know, it wasn't an official position. Um, the poem we read for class of hers, again, I told you, is called Eve. She wrote that in 1865. Um, so that would have been about the same time period as the Emily Dickinson poetry for reading, too. It involves similar prevalent Rossetti themes of, you know, I told you, temptation, renunciation. Of course, you can see that with Eve, you know, story of Eve. Of course, it's going to be about temptation. Um, and a female agency and sexuality and Victorian gender roles as well. So when you read the poem, make sure you look out for those. Christina never married, and she lived to 64, so there was ample probably opportunity, but she never married, but continued to live her life, a curious mixture of renunciation, Anglican devotion. And remember, her sister um, became an Anglican uh, nun, I believe. Um, so she was quite Anglican. That's Church of England, as you may recall. Um, she was she lived a life of careful but committed artistry, keen professionalism in business matters, self promotion. So she promoted herself as a poet, and energetic associations with the pre Raphaelite Brotherhood. Her talented brothers often helped her revise her work and protect her business rights as a poet. So I invite you to read Christina Rossetti, her life as described in the anthology and the poet. I mean, the poem, of course, we read for class Eve, you know, dovetailing on many of those themes of Eve that we've traced um, from the Middle Ages through now till at least the 19th century. All right. Enjoy. Christina Rossetti. <laughs> 